you dare come off. John Dory in the net. Yes. <laughs> and when I show you it, you will realise why it was so special. Look at that. What about that for an unbelievable creature? Look at the size of its mouth. Can you hear it grunting? What an unbelievable thing these are. Hello and welcome back to the Fish Locker. Following on from the fantastic success that we had yesterday on the boat catching some amazing John Dorries. I have been speaking to Jim and he has been kind enough to invite us over to Spargo's Kitchen. So I will just hand you straight over to... Hello. Thank you. Uh, yes, two magnificent fish. So I'm going to bake one hole and we will fill it the other one. Um, pan fry that with some mushrooms and orange segments in a white wine cream sauce. Uh, this one I'm just going to trim up, take the head off and then I'm going to bake it in this tray. I've just softened some onion and a little olive oil and butter just to give the, the um, onion a, a head start. And in this pan I've just got some long salad potatoes which I've quartered. They've just had 10 minutes. I'm going to drain them, add them to that and then we'll bake the fish. Now as you said trimming it off as I mentioned in the fishing video, it does have an awful lot of spines. I mean, each one of these is a formidable spike. And again, they're all the way down the sides. So we'll try and take as many of those off as we can. Right, I'll just drain these potatoes. Good pair of shears. It is worth saying to be careful whenever you're doing any of these. You did fall foul of a bass a while ago. I did. did. It was like a, some form of torture with a bass spine under my fingernails. You had to go all the way to casualty and they, they ground down the top of his fingernails to be able to pull the spine out. Right. Fishy rubbish. There. But John has gutted this so there's belly cavity, empty belly cavity. There's that much spine, it's all bone and spine, isn't it? I'm just it? going to take his eyeballs out. Oh, I see. Right, we've given the uh, John Dory a short back and sides. I've removed the eyeballs, just opened up the belly cavity because I'm going to put some garlic and aromatics in there, just a little slit with a knife. All the bitey bits removed, so that's going to go into the middle of the pan. blanched potatoes around, the softened onion. I'm just going to peel some garlic. Right, garlic in there. And been up, Carol's been up to the allotment. We've got some, pick some herbs. I'm going to stick a little rosemary inside. Up to cherry tomatoes. And I've got some sea salt. Black pepper. Splash of olive oil. Just over the fish there's some oil and butter in the pan. Right, the oven is preheated to 220 and he's going to go in there for, I would say, about the shy side of 20 minutes. Right, the John Dory is in the oven, uh, so we're going to uh, fill it this John Dory. So, 
I'll leave all the spines on because we can work around those. Um, you can, you, as you were saying there with the last one, you can see where the belly cavity was, where there's that sunken area. Before I'd gutted it, that was full on there. Yes, all the meat is concentrated there on the fish. This is all quite empty. But uh, a long backbone, a sharp knife. And then just angling the knife down towards. And then if you... That's it, you can generally, you can hear if you're running along the ribs, as you're, you're down tight, aren't you? That's as far as you can go. Just keep a little pressure on the fish, on the flesh, I should say, and it will just come away. A magnificent piece of fish. It's just like a minefield trying to get past all the spines so you don't clip yourself while you're doing it. And there we go. And there. So we'll give this a trim up. Yeah, there's there's that empty belly cavity that we're talking about. It's just well, millimetres thick, so there's been no wastage there. And do exactly the same from this side. We were talking about um, the mark, the thumbprint on there, weren't we? I mentioned it in the fishing video, but... Oh, this is the thumb mark of uh, St Peter. Because this is the fish that fed one of the loaves and fishes that fed the... 5,000. It must have been a pretty big John Dory to have fed 5,000. What's the thumbprint on a haddock then? That's the devil's thumbprint. That was the, uh, they say that the devil did that as an, as like an imitation to Jesus who's feeding the 5,000. Right, there's our John Dory successfully filleted and no bloody fingers, which is amazing. Uh, all the meat is off. There are no bones in the fillet, but I will just Give them a little tidy up, uh, and this I'm going just to chop up in a in a wee while, and I'll use that for fish stock for future fish dishes. I'm just going to take the skin off this fillet, just for presentation's sake. I know a lot of people like to eat that skin, but I just want to see this. So again, keep the pressure on the skin, keep tugging it, and just there it comes. There's nothing on that, it's like a Rizzler paper. And again, that'll be going in the stock pot. And there we have just an absolutely fabulous piece of fish. It smells fresh and of the ocean. So we just trim away from the belly cavity. A little bit of frill for the stock pot. So this is the tail end. A good tip. Put a bit of salt on these fingers and it gives you good purchase. So knife under, grasp, pull on the skin and just a slight seesawing motion with the knife slightly angled and there's the skin. And there again another lovely fillet of fish. Right I've got to wash my hands wash the boards down and we'll come back and start cooking. Right John, we're just going to lift this from the oven. That's smelling delicious. I'm just going to put some, chop up some fresh herbs and scatter some capers over the top of that. That fish in there looks absolutely delicious. Stunning white fish. Mm, it's not far away. So we fill up Carol went up to the allotment this morning. We've got some fresh marjoram. Uh, there's some rosemary in the cavity. I just got to put some sage in and some chive. 
my fresh thyme plant has not survived so I'm just going to use a little dried thyme I'm not going to put that on the fish because it was slightly woody but it'll add a nice flavour you were saying about the head as well you left the head on because oh yes I, I left the head the, the head on because the, it will produce some good juices for us to um, I'm going to put a splash of wine in there, a little cold water. I've just run a knife through those. So we've got uh, flat leaf parsley, marjoram, and some chives. A bit of dried thyme I put in. Uh, if, it, if we had basil, we could put some basil in. All good aromatics. And some capers. Oh, you could also, if you had some uh, olives, you could scatter a few olives in there. That also would be very good. Right, little white wine. And if I could get to the sink, John, I'm just going to put a splash of cold water. And that will make us a lovely sauce. Right, I should say another five minutes. Right, John, uh, put this pan onto warm, a little olive oil in there. And with this superb filleting knife of yours, it's a beauty. Uh, right, I started chopping some onion. I'll just finish that if I may. These are homegrown onions. So, the flavour of them is quite intense. Don't need a lot. And I'm going to toss these into the pan. Let them sweat down gently. Nice and small. Some I did earlier. That's for the compost. Salt, soften. That was one of the things I was going to ask you, Jim. Is you do you you compost any of the waste that's left in your kitchen, and you use it on the allotment? It's my favourite job at the allotment, sieving the compost out. It's just wonderful. Right, don't put your hands in the sink. There are knives in there. Putting the lid on just creates a bit of steam, so they'll uh, soften and stay nice and white. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do some parmentier potatoes to go with our pan fried fillets. So this is some homegrown potatoes. I've just diced them, given them five minutes in some boiling water. They're in some olive oil and a little butter seasoned and they're going in the oven. I'm just going to test this fish. It really has come away, hasn't it? Lovely, it's looking, smelling delicious. Right, a small knife into the thickest part of the fish, up against, and I can feel the, the rib bones under the blade of the knife. I'm just going to touch that. That's only that's only warm. So I'm just going to put the fish back in for another another five minutes. I would say. If the tip of that knife 
at the tip of that knife we're near hot and we know the fish is cooked. Uh, button mushrooms which I have sliced they're going to go in I'm just going to let those soften and then we'll take the onion, the cooked onion and mushroom out and we'll use the same pan for cooking the fish fillets. I'm just going to segment some oranges. So, top and tail. And then just follow the pith all the way around the orange. You're taking the pith a bit, aren't you? That's, that's, that's kind of chortling in the background. Uh, take all the pith off. Now, see the white membrane? Just cut down one side. So that's one side. Then go to the next inside that membrane. Oh, it's supposed to fall neatly into the dish. <laughs> Dragon. Down the side of the membrane. Across, come inside the next membrane. And then you have beautiful segments of orange flesh. Perfect for your fruit salad. Doesn't have to be for fish cookery. This also works for lemons, grapefruits limes and the juice we want. And once again, here's our softened onion and mushrooms. Just going to take those out of the pan. Oh, smells heavenly. I do that because I want to cook the fish and I don't have another frying pan. If I were at work, I would have countless pounds. Another alternative is to do the fish fillets first. Pop them onto a plate. One of the subscribers was asking what, what types of pans you actually use. Uh, this is, uh, this belongs, I'm a gentleman in residence. Uh, this pan belongs to Carol. <laughs> so I don't actually know. Which just says that you get most of them from Sainsbury's. Uh, no, the sauce, my saucepans are the best I've ever had. They're James Martin saucepans. They're absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Um, this is sort of a... Other saucepans are available. This is just our own personal opinion. Uh, right, I've just wiped the pan out with some kitchen paper. i put a knob of butter, a scant ounce, I would imagine. Uh, I have a pan of boiling salted water. Cook some broccoli spears whilst we cook the fish. Plain flour, some salt and ground pepper. So these, these fillets they are. I was just noting there that people who've, who know fish, whiting, codling, that type of thing, you generally get a flaky fish. Or as you can see with the sinews and the shape of this, that it is quite a meaty fish as well, isn't it? It is a meaty fish, yes. I'm just coating it in flour so it gives it a little, uh, a little protection. Now, hopefully we can get, we get these two in together. There's a bit of seasoning in the flour, but I'm just going to... A little extra, tiniest, that wasn't even, a, that was like a half pinch. Lifted the John Dory out of the, out of the oven. I can smell it cooked. It's just wonderful. So again, small knife into the flesh, 
down against the bone and just leave it there for a few seconds. I'm going to touch up to my bottom lip and that's, that's not hot but it's past. It, that's very comfortable. That fish is cooked beautifully. It does smell absolutely delicious. So you can just see the fish fillet. The beginning to translucent around the edges. So we'll turn those over. They look and smell amazing. And uh, this is this was the skin side. So what I will do is I'll when we come to finish the dish. I'm going to turn them back again. I've turned the fish fillets back over. Uh, they will try naturally to break into their three separate pieces. But don't be bothered. I'm just going to put the cooked onion and the mushrooms back in. White wine, orange segments, and juice in. Just going to give that a minute to let the wine cook off, and the broccoli will be cooked. So I'll drain that. 300 ml. Right. And uh, the wine is uh, reduced with the orange juice. Got some double cream, about 150 mils. I'm going to let that simmer away and finish the sauce. Right, for the sake of presentation, we're just going to remove a bit of skin and it just lift straight off the fish. You could use two forks. I just have asbestos fingers. see there the fish will just lift right off that fillet look beautifully cooked all right returning to the sauced dish just lifting the fish fillets out into your serving dish Taste of this for seasoning. Whoa. Perfect. And then we shall go this way. Just tip. The cooking is done. Let's eat. So John, what do you want to try? Do you want to try the baked one first or the... I honestly do not mind. With a bigger spoon. This is the, uh, the one we baked whole in the oven. Mm. I've removed the skin uh, for presentation purposes. Just used a knife and uh, removed one fillet. And you filled the belly cavity with your aromatics, didn't you? Put some aromatic herbs into the, into the belly cavity with some crushed garlic and then baked it with onion, parboiled potatoes, cherry tomatoes. Then we added a splash of wine, some capers, a little water. And this one here, these were the fillets and on. That's, we filleted that fish, pan fried the fillets, um, finely diced onion, button, sliced button mushrooms, splash of white wine, double cream. Lizzie, which, right. which fish do you want? Do you want some fish down. or some saucy fish? Oh my God. Where did you? Right, we've taken the two top fillets off, so I'm just going to remove the bone. Simple as that into a waiting plate. 
That's for you. Thank you. It's one of those. Could be one of those. That's like a cartoon. Cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Like when cat dips it in its mouth and pulls it out, and it's just a skeleton. Thank you. Right. Do a pan ice. I don't need to tell you, but both of these dishes were absolutely delicious. Licking the plate, delicious. Right. Well, we're well and truly fed now. That was unbelievable it was amazing catching them but the cook up afterwards it really did them justice so i just thank you very much Pleasure. what are you looking for james <gasps> oh. spies there is a drone flying around <laughs> it's not ours no, no. <laughs> what have you got what nice t-shirt have you got there james and i are sporting our what t-shirt is it that you've got pinchy thanos so um, I'm, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you've enjoyed joining us. We've had a delicious cook up and we're looking forward to doing some more. If you have any ideas, or if, yes me too, <laughs> if you have any ideas or suggestions please let us know. In the meantime, all the best and what do we say? Goodbye from the fish locker. Goodbye from the fish locker. See you later. Bye. Goodbye from Spargo's kitchen. <laughs> Welcome to my home.